The official AMD drivers for the 7000 series processors were released a couple of weeks ago and we are now able to update our handhelds to use the same drivers. This means that we can now perform benchmarks and get a better idea of how each performs. We can also test them with the GPD G1 eGPU docking station with compatible USB 4 devices. This is not a G1 review, though you can find our review linked in the description. So before we get started with the benchmarks, I will briefly go over what we did. We are using the AMD version 23.7.2 drivers on all handhelds. These are the first official AMD drivers and we did see a range of increase and decreases in stability and performance compared to the beta drivers. More on this after the benchmark results. We are testing with the GPD WinMax 2 2023 Ryzen 5 and 7 models. Both have Oculink and USB 4 support. We also have the AOK Zoe A1 Pro and Ioneo 2S which both have the 7840U processor. We will also be testing the GPD Win 4, WinMax 2 and Ioneo Geek which have the previous generation 6800U processors. All of these lack an Oculink port but do have USB 4 support. Oh, and don't forget, you can buy all of these handhelds from us at droix.co.uk and droix.net for international orders. We will be benchmarking all of these handhelds with their internal display as well as output to an external monitor via the G1. Why both displays? This is to see how the USB 4 bandwidth affects performance. When using an internal display, the data is sent from the handheld to the G1, then back to the handheld to display on the internal screen. This requires twice as much bandwidth through the USB 4 cable than it would be sending data from the handheld to the G1 and then directly output into an external display. Using internal displays can result in bottlenecks and lower the performance of the eGPU. Oculink is a higher bandwidth method of transferring data than USB 4, upwards of 64 versus 40 gigabits a second. This means that more data can be transferred, resulting in less bottlenecks and optimal performance. We will explore and compare Oculink performance in a future video. For all handhelds, we are running at 28 watts CDP and are using 4K, 1440p, 1080p and 720p on an external 4K display. For internal displays on all apart from the Ioneo Geek, we are using 1080 and 720p regardless of the handheld supported resolutions. The Geek has an internal display resolution of 800p, so there are no 1080p tests for this model. We keep them all the same resolution so we can get a more accurate comparison of performance. We start the benchmarks with 3D Mark. We are only testing with an external monitor for this as it runs at different resolutions on internal displays. In the interest of transparency, we did have a few issues running the 3D Mark benchmarks with the G1, usually with random crashing or freezing. I think it's due to using an external GPU more than anything else, as it happened across a few different devices. We repeated the WinMax 2 23 Ryzen 7 times by benchmarks a few times, and it would not go any higher than 4232. We have no idea why, there's some kind of weird issue there on this driver version. It's the same with the GPD Win 4, it would simply freeze or crash at random intervals for all three tests. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro just about come out on top here based on averages. We start the game benchmarks with Forza Horizon 5 on the very low graphics settings. AMD CPU and GPUs are optimised to work great on this game so it's ideal as a test. With the external monitor, at 4K we get between 72 up to 79 FPS across the devices, with similar patterns for 1440, 1080 and 720p. The Ioneo 2S and original GPD WinMax 2 take first place here with the same frame rates. Not bad seeing as they are 6000 and 7000 series CPUs respectively. On the internal display, the AOK Zoe A1 Pro would not complete any benchmarks. We think it's a USB bandwidth issue as it would simply crash back to the desktop at random. The Ioneo 2S just about takes the lead with the WinMax 2 and Win 4 very close behind. Our next benchmark is Cyberpunk. We are using the lowest graphics settings with no upscaling. On the external display we see very similar scores at 4K and 1440p, with some variation at 1080 and 720p. The Max 2 23 Ryzen 7 takes the lead here. 
On the internal display, the Ryzen 7 does very well again with a few extra frames above the others, with its Ryzen 5 brother in clear second place. There's a few frames difference with the others, but nothing else of note. Next is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running on the lowest graphic settings. Despite the age of the game, it is still highly demanding. On the external display, the Iron Neo Geek falls behind at 1080p and above. It might be a temperature or cooling issue here. The Max 2 23 Ryzen 7 and AOK Zoe A1 Pro get very good scores on average. On the internal display, we see some difference to the external display. The AOK Zoe suffers again from possible bandwidth issues with a massive drop in performance. The Max 2 Ryzen 5 actually does a little better than the Ryzen 7 in this benchmark, which was surprising. Something more recent is Street Fighter 6. We are running at 4K on the highest graphics settings to see how well everything performs under high loads. On the external monitor, we get very similar scores across most of the handhelds, with literally a frame or two difference. There has to be an exception though. The GPD Win 4 saw a performance dip on the second and third part of the benchmark. On the internal display at 1080p, the bar chart shows very little difference between the handhelds. Essentially, they all run at 60 frames per second. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro would not play nicely with random crashing back to the desktop. The Iron Neo Geek would likely be able to run at 60fps as well, but we are limited to 800p resolution on this handheld. We can see from the benchmarks that the AMD 7000 series drivers are still very much unstable and underperforming in some conditions. We did see some differences from the beta driver benchmarks we made in our main review. They were in some ways higher performing but not as stable, and with the new official drivers often lower performing but a bit more stable. Then on some benchmarks or devices that would switch around vice versa. AMD drivers are a real mess right now for the 7000 series. We would expect future releases to improve in both stability and performance for the 7000 series handhelds. Keep in mind that the 6800U is a previous generation processor that had similar issues when first released and has since had time for the drivers to mature. This should be the same for the 7000 series over time. This video compares the USB 4 performance with the GPD G1 across a range of current and previous generation handhelds. We see comparable performance on GPU demanding games on both generations of processors. This is great as it can breathe new life into older handhelds that struggle for GPU intensive games. In some cases we also saw the 6800U had higher scores than the 7840 CPUs. But keep in mind that newer models may support Oculink and it's here where we will see an overall performance increase. The GPD G1 eGPU docking station is an excellent bit of kit that is currently a little let down by poor AMD driver support. These benchmarks do push it to its limits and it handles it very well, providing the actual handheld can keep up with it, unlike the AOK Zoe A1 Pro. As we saw in our main G1 review video, depending on the game's requirements, you can play games usually at 1440p with decent graphic settings or 4K with lower settings. The GPD G1 is definitely worth considering if you have a 6000 series handheld and do not want to upgrade to a newer model. Games will thank you for that massive boost in GPU performance. If you do have the latest 7000 series, you will of course see that massive boost in performance. Over time, we may even see faster performance as the drivers improve. The GPD G1 is still a definite consideration for this generation, but it will require some patience to get the best out of it. As we mentioned, the GPD G1 is an excellent bit of kit. You could be out and about playing on your handheld, then at home dock it with the G1 connected to a wireless controller for some big screen gaming with higher performance, resolution and graphics. You can learn more about the GPD G1 eGPU docking station and order yours today at droix.co.uk and droix.net for international shipping. And don't forget you can buy all of the handhelds featured today, including pre-orders for the new GPD Win 4 model with Oculink Pole and 7840U CPU. Tell us what you think about the GPD G1. Would you like to see other tests or videos on it? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos and we hope to see you back in the next one.